Hello everyone, welcome to the ninth episode uh, for this deep learning with PyTorch series. So in the last video or the last session, I talked about how the forward propagation works, right? And now uh, let's do a recap of this. So what we are saying is based on the given input. So if these are my input, I'm just denoting the whole input as X. Then we are uh, passing that input to a set of hidden layers. Uh, and in, in the first hidden layer, like we are doing a set of operations which are like linear operations Z and A, right? So this is like Z1, A1. Then we are passing it through an output layer where we are again doing a Z2, A2. And we are getting the final output, which is nothing but A or Y hat, right? So this is where we are uh, kind of taking a forward steps, right? We are uh, converting my Z at first to X, uh, Z. Uh, X to Z, then Z to A, uh, A1. Then using the A1, we are kind of kind of generating the Z2, and using the Z2, we are generating the A2, which is nothing but A or Y paired, right? Or Y hat, right? So this is where we are kind of going in the forward direction in this way, and we are starting from X, we are generating my Y hat or the prediction. So this is kind of a forward propagation step, which we are which we have discussed in detail in the last uh, video, right? So if you have not watched that, uh, so you can uh, go ahead and, and look into that, right? OK, so this is forward propagation, right? So this is uh, what I wanted to give an uh, heads up if we go uh, before we go to the. Backward propagation step, right? So once we do the forward propagation, let's uh, go and uh, check what the backward propagation is, right? So uh, we have done a lot of groundwork in, in case of uh, linear regression and logistic regression. So we understood how the math is going on, how we calculate the loss, then using that, using that loss, how we calculate the derivative of uh, loss with respect to the model parameters. And once we calculate the derivatives, we are using those derivatives to kind of update the model parameters, right? So similarly, uh, we will do that for neural networks. So once you have a good understanding of the uh, gradient descent, which happens in case of linear regression and logistic regression, the math or the back propagation for neural networks is much more easier. So that's why I kind of went through a series of videos to understand, make you understand how the math is working for uh, linear and logistic regression, right? So yeah, now let's talk about how this works for neural networks. So in case of neural networks, we have this set of model parameters, right? So like W1, B1 and W2, uh, B2, right? So these are set of model parameters which we have in case of um, neural network with uh, two layers, right? One is hidden layer and then we also have an output layer. So once we have that, uh, we can do a forward propagation, right? So in forward propagation using my input, so input goes into this and we calculate my Z1, which is like the linear operation. Then we calculate A1, then using the A1, we will calculate Z2 and in the end using uh, Z2, we calculate A, right? Which is kind of the activation function uh, using the Z2, we are uh, calculating the activation function output, which is A. So we can also denote it we, using a Y hat, or we can also call it as Y pred, right? So this is what we get after the forward propagation, right? My prediction uh, given the input, right? So once we have my Y pred, we also have the actual level of my uh, data set from the training data set, right? Which is Y. So using that Y and Y pred, we can calculate my cost function, right? Or uh, like cost function for this four model parameters, right? Which is like W1, B1, W2, B2. And we can denote it using this notation, right? So this we will do for all the training examples. So that's, that's why we see uh, sum, uh, summation starting from i equals to 1 to n. So my input is xn. So there are n number of data points inside my training data set, and we are calculating the loss with respect to each of the training examples, right? So we denote the loss using uh, this notation. So loss with respect to um, y hat and y. So we calculate how the predictions are kind of deviating from the actual value whether it's a regression or a classification problem. We are just calculating the deviation from my prediction 
while comparing with the actual value, right? Once we have that, we need to calculate the gradients, right? So the gradients, uh, what we will do is we will calculate uh, the uh, we will calculate the derivative of my cost function with respect to each of these parameters, right? So W1, B1, W2, and B2. And once we calculate that, we will get these values, right? Uh, w, DW1, DB1, D, DW low two and db2 right so this is like cost of uh, derivative of cost function with respect to each of the w and b of different uh, layers right so and once we get that we will update my model parameters right so this is for uh, this is where we are updating w1 and w2 and this is where we are updating my bias for so this should be uh, b1 so b1 and b2 right so this is how we can update the model parameters using the gradients by calculating the derivatives of cost function with respect to w and b and this we will repeat multiple times right so we will repeat uh, till we reach the global minima or we do a certain number of iterations uh, which are predefined right so we will uh, keep on doing this whole steps right now let's see how we calculate the uh, derivatives of different layers using the concept of chain rule right so the magic is happening here with the use of chain rule of calculus so just to simplify the things i have uh, like denoting the whole procedure which we are talking about in this way so we have our input which is nothing but x so using that x in the first layer or the hidden layer we are kind of calculating my z1 and a1 so z1 is nothing but w transpose uh, x i'm just ignoring the bias for the sake of simplicity in this uh, in this whole slide or you can think that my bias is also kind of incorporated in my w weight right so uh, so once we do the linear operation and we calculate the z1 then we pass this z1 to activation layer activation function of this particular hidden layer and we get the output of a1 which is like the non linearity of this hidden layer so once we get the a1 then again using the weights associated for this layer or the output layer which is nothing but w2 right we will calculate the linear part which is z2 using this operation and once we have the z2 we will pass it through an activation function which which is specific to my output layer right then we will get my final output which is a right and this is the output which we have my a and then we also have the actual value which is y and we calculate uh, the we can calculate the cost function with respect to my w1 and w2 so w1 and w2 are the parameters of the model which we want to optimize using gradient descent right and to uh, so what we need to do is we need to calculate these two terms right uh, derivative of cost function with respect to w1 and derivative of cost function with respect to w2 right so once if we can calculate these two things then our life will be much more easier and we can do the gradient descent optimization step right so how we can calculate is we can uh, yeah, we will use the concept of chain rule. So at first we have. Uh, so if I, if we calculate the first uh, weight, right, or the weight associated with output layer, which is W2. So I need to calculate this part, which is uh, cost function with respect to W2, right? So this we can write it as with the help of chain rule. So because in the output layer we have only access to my A. Right. So first we need to take the derivative of cost function with respect to A. So which is nothing but uh, derivative of cost function with respect to the output. Right. So and again using this derivative of uh, now we will take the derivative of output with respect to Z2 because we get got A using Z2. Right. So we will um, move backwards once we calculate the DL by da then using that we can calculate uh, the derivative of uh, da by dz2 right so and then from z2 we will because z2 have an associated value of w2 so now we can calculate the derivative of z2 with respect to uh, with respect to w2 
right? And then we can multiply each of these terms to get the final derivative of dl by dw2, right? So this is like the co uh, derivative of cost function with respect to the W2 or the uh, weights associated to the output layer, right? So this is what we are doing at the output layer. Then we, we also need to calculate my uh, derivative with respect to this uh, parameter of the model, right? Which is W1. So W1 uh, DL by W1 can be calculated in the similar way. So at first we need to calculate DL by DA. DA. Once once we calculate then then we calculate DL by uh, DA by DZ2 and uh, DZ2 with the help of DZ2 we can calculate the uh, derivative of D from Z. We have the Z2 is nothing but W2 transpose multiplied by A1, right? So now using Z2 we can calculate DZ2 by DA1. Right, so this is nothing but this one, and then using a1 because a1 is associated with z1, you can see here. So with the help of a1, we can calculate d a1 by dz1. Once we have the z1, we move towards the z1. Then using the z1, we can calculate the z derivative of dz1 by dw1. Right, so it, it is kind of we are doing a steps in the backward direction, right? So at first we calculate the derivative with respect to output. Then out from output we move towards the linear operation at the output layer, which is like with respect to Z2. Once we have Z2, then we can using that Z2, we can calculate uh, the derivative with respect to A1, which is nothing but the non-linearity non for the hidden layer or the first layer. Once we take the derivative with respect to the nonlinear part, we can move to the linear part, right? Which is from A1. Using the A1, we can calculate the derivative with respect to Z1. And once we have gone through the Z1, then we can calculate the derivative of DZ1 with respect to DW1. So finally, we will get the uh, value of DL with respect to DW1, right? So let me erase these things and let me show you how the flow is actually working, right? So we are moving in a backward direction. So we will start from the output and then slowly we will move ahead to the input layer, right? OK, now let's see how this operation is working. So we will start from this output. So using the output, we will move. Sorry. So using the output, we will move towards this Z2. Once we have the Z2, we will move towards uh, A1. So once we have the A1, then we will calculate the derivative with respect to uh, W1, right? So this is how we are moving in the backward direction. So in the forward propagation, we generally move in this direction. And in the, in the back propagation, we generally move in this direction and we calculate the derivative with respect to the chain rules, right? I hope this is clear to you. If you are not understanding it, just write it in, in a pen and paper and try to do it with your hand how the chain rule is working. And then the concept will be much more clear to you. Or you can rewatch this video to get, get a proper understanding of this whole process. Now, once we have this everything, right? So if we kind of put everything together, right? We kind of initialize uh, the weights of my model, which is like initialize the W1, B1, then W2, B2. Once we kind of initialize the weights, then we will do a forward propagation. In the forward propagation, we will calculate uh, at first Z1. So using the Z1, we will calculate A1. So using A1, we will calculate Z2. Once we have Z2, we will calculate A2, right? So once we have a, A2, A2 is nothing but my Y hat, right? So why using this Y hat, we will compare and calculate the loss of my Y hat with respect while comparing with the actual value. So this is my loss, right? So once we have my loss, then we can calculate the derivatives of each layer, right? So we will calculate DW1, DB1, then dw2 and db2 and once we have this we can do a perform a gradient descent steps right so how we do the gradient descent that is w1 will be w1 minus learning rate times dw1 
and similarly we will do the operation for b1 so sorry this would be b1 minus learning rate times wb1 and also similarly we will do the operations for w2 right so w2 will be w2 minus dw2 and b2 will be b2 then learning rate times learning rate multiplied with the derivative of db2 right so then we will kind of do this operations multiple time this one and this one right and also the calculation of derivatives so all these things we will keep on doing till we reach the global minima or we do certain number of steps right so this this is kind of a, a flow diagram which you can visualize in your mind and and try to get a uh, inner working of neural network. So this is how we do it in case of a uh, simple two layer neural network. And uh, yeah, so that's all I have for back propagation using this uh, whole demonstration of using multiple uh, drawing and and doing calculating the derivatives using chain rule and all. I hope this is clear to you. And uh, from the next video onwards, we will see how we can do uh, a PyTorch implementation. So we will at first we will do the uh, very basics of different PyTorch functions and slowly we will move ahead and do the code implementation of a neural network using uh, PyTorch. Yeah, so thank you all. Thanks for your time.